Hello everyone, hope you're doing fine. So in this video, we're going to see about uh, principal stresses and principal strains. Let's get started. And before we start, I would really appreciate it if you could smash that like button, drop me a comment and share this free program with anyone who might need it. So coming to the basics of principal stresses, let me take an object that is subjected to stresses that is it will be subjected to forces as a result stresses will be developing so this is sigma x in the x coordinate and sigma y in the y axis if i take an object there will be so many planes inside it and for every plane we will have a normal coordinate that is a normal uh, stress in it and a tangential stress in it so the normal stress it is denoted as sigma n and the tangential stress it is denoted by tau so in this object also there will be a plane where this shear stress will be zero the a plane where shear stress is zero is called as our principal plane and the corresponding normal stresses right those are called as principal stresses so the, there may be any number of principal planes in a uh, in an object so let me take this is my principal plane then this is my sigma n sigma n is given by where tau xy is the shear stresses acting on the member. So coming to the shear stress, this shear stress, it is equal to and this angle it is inclined, it is called as theta. So in order to find this theta, you can go for this formula. So from these two things, you can find the resultant stress also. And uh, the angle between the normal stress and the plane, this is given as phi or it is also called as obliquity. So coming to major principal stresses and minor principal stresses, there is an object and there are several planes in it. There may be many principal planes in it. So the principal plane with the maximum principal stress, that is with the maximum normal stress is called as my major principal stress. Whereas the principal plane with the uh, least amount of normal stress or uh, the principal stress is given as my uh, minor principal stress. So let me take this object. And it has a principal stress of say 50 kilo Newton and another uh, uh, principal uh, plane it is somewhere here and it has a, a principal stress of 20 kilo Newton and another thing it has a stress of 30 kilo Newton. So from this which will be your major principal stress it will be 50 because it is the maximum amount of uh, principal stress present and the minor principal stress will be 20 because it is the least one. Coming to the formula sigma 1 is the major principal axis and sigma 2 is the minor principal axis it is given by so here uh, if it is sigma 2 it will be minus sign since it is sigma 1 it will be plus sign that is why i have put plus or minus so with this we can find the maximum uh, shear stress also so on simplifying this so the questions here will be very easy uh, i'm sure you guys will be able to crack it once you see it Coming to the first question, the state of stress at a point in a loaded member is shown in figure. The magnitude of maximum shear stress is what? So we know what is tau max. We have the formula, we just saw it. It is, uh, we can either use this one or this one. If they have given the major and minor principal axis, then we can use this formula. Or if the normal stresses are given, then we can go for this formula. So they have given the sigma x and sigma y values. So we can go to the second formula, which is... Uh, so on substituting, so here you can see that uh, sigma x it is in compression whereas sigma y it is in tension. So I can say that sigma y is equal to minus 40 because for me compression is positive, uh, tension is negative. You can take your own sign convention. Since we are squaring it, it wouldn't matter. So your answer is 50 megapascal. Option C. Next question, uh, at a point a strain body, at a point in a strain body carrying two unequal unlike principal stresses P1 and P2. So they have given principal stresses. The maximum shear stress is given by. So tau max formula it is equal to uh, sigma 1 minus sigma 2 by 2. So they have told that P1 and uh, P2 they are in the opposite direction that is they are unlike. Which means if P1 is equal to P1 then uh, P2 will not be in the same direction of P1. If P1 is in plus direction, P1, P2 will be in minus direction. Therefore, I can substitute and tell that P, uh, P1 plus P2 by 2. Going to the next question. The radius of the Mohr circle of stress 
of a strained element is 20 newton per millimeter square and the minor principal stress uh, is 10 the major principal stress is what so here they have given radius of Mohr circle so we know that the radius of Mohr circle is nothing but maximum shear stress so again we know the maximum shear stress formula it is sigma 1 minus sigma 2 by 2 answer is option b next question the principal stresses sigma 1 sigma 2 and sigma 3 are at a point respectively are 80 30 and minus 40 mpa the maximum shear stress is what so again this is maximum shear stress where sigma 1 is the maximum uh, principal stress and sigma 2 is the minimum principal stress so you can say that out of these three things 80 is maximum so sigma 1 is equal to 80 and out of these three things minus 40 is the minimum value so sigma 2 can be taken as minus 40 mpa to 60 so the answer is option d next question the plane stress at a point in a body is defined by principal stresses uh, 3 sigma and sigma the ratio of the normal stress to the maximum shear stress on the plane of maximum uh, shear stress is what so they have told that it is in the plane of maximum shear stress so whenever it is in the plane of a maximum shear stress you have to remember that normal stress will become and the shear stress will become the maximum shear stress which will be equal to they have given the value of sigma x and sigma y here on substituting we will get that uh, sigma n it will become since it is in plus i can say that it will become and this will become uh, 3 minus 1 so the ratio will be 2 sigma by 1 sigma which is equal to 2 so your answer is option b Next question, the principal strains at a point are so and so. What is the maximum shear strain at that point? So the difference between maximum shear stress and the maximum shear strain is that this 100 minus of minus uh, 200. So your answer is 300 into 10 power minus 6. Next question, uh, in a principal stress problem, there is a normal tensile stress, sigma x, sigma y accompanied by shear stresses tau xy at a point along the orthogonal Cartesian coordinates x and y respectively. If it is observed that the minimum principal stress on a certain plane is 0, then what is it? Minimum principal stress is 0. So what is the formula for minimum principal stress? This denoted by sigma 2, it is equal to so they have told that this is equal to 0 so this will become come to this side and therefore it will become sigma x plus sigma y by 2 is equal to so and so so from this we can say that tau xy is equal to root of sigma x sigma y so your answer is option c so next question if the principal stress at a point in a strain body are p1 and p2 where p1 is greater than p2 which means this is the major one then the resultant stress on a plane carrying the maximum shear stress is what so they have asked for resultant stress what is our formula for resultant stress so we have to find what is sigma n and tau so they have told that it carries maximum shear stress therefore we will know what is sigma n and tau they have told that sigma x is equal to p1 sigma y is equal to p2 so this can be written as your answer will be since this is in plus sign I can omit these two things our answer will be p1 square plus p2 square by 2 so your answer is option b so with this we come to the end of this video I hope you found this useful thank you so much for watching guys I'll see you in the next video bye bye take care stay